Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another Thought for the Day. This is Wednesday the 4th of May. Now when I say welcome to another Thought for the Day, believe it or not, this is Thought for the Day number 300. That's right, we've done 300 of these thoughts and we've posted them all online on the YouTube channel belonging to our own church, Larbert Baptist. So uh, I remember way back at the, the beginning when we started these uh, uh, little videos, uh, I just wondered how long they would last or how many we would have to do. Uh, and lo and behold, I had no idea then that we were going to get um, as far as 300. In fact, I remember when we passed the 100 mark, I uh, remarked on that as well. And uh, somebody actually came up to me and said, uh, how do you know what to talk about? Um, do you not run out of ideas or things to present? And uh, of course, I, I just had to remind the person that when you have this book, the Bible, in front of you, uh, you have an inexhaustible supply of material, of resources, of thoughts, of ideas, of um, wonderful things uh, to share and to to think about uh, for yourself or for ourselves corporately. Uh, so here we are. Maybe that person thought uh, I wasn't capable of having a hundred thoughts in my mind, uh, but there you have it. Now we're at uh, three hundred, and uh, I think I have also got to acknowledge the help that uh, I've been having with these uh, little thoughts because. It's not all my own work, as you know. Can I just publicly thank Guy for faithfully contributing on a Monday evening? Um, Guy's been doing that for over a year now, and we're very glad to have him and to um, listen to what he has to say as well. So between the two of us, we've managed to notch up um, 300 thoughts for the day. And uh, again, thank you to all you who are listening. Uh, we are a small but dedicated band, and I know that there's just not our local folk listening to this, uh, but people are listening from further afield, and it's good to have that connection with folk literally all over the world. So, um, congratulations uh, to ourselves, I suppose, on uh, episode number 300. Uh, I've already said that this is our um, basis for our talks. I, I know we have um, sometimes a little bit of uh, frivolity, a wee bit of lightheartedness, but um, I hope you agree that by and large uh, all our thoughts are uh, based on uh, the Bible and biblical matters and themes. So uh, when I say we have an inexhaustible supply, I, I'm not joking. We have uh, one valued a retired pastor in our contribution in our con congregation who uh, continually reminds people that he's been studying this for his uh, for a lifetime and he still feels as if he's just scratching the surface and uh, I can concur with that it's a, a very true statement indeed uh, we've got to remember friends that this is no ordinary book or no ordinary collection of books I think we all know there's uh, 66 books bound together in a, a volume like this. And uh, of course, uh, we've got to remember that uh, it is a supernatural production, as it were. God is the author of uh, Scripture. Um, he has inspired the various human writers that have been used uh, to pen uh, what he has directed them um, to write and of course it's been bound together it's been put together and it's been preserved for us uh, by the Lord there's been many attempts from many people and uh, many countries down through the ages um, to do away with this book um, and they have never succeeded they never will succeed because the Lord says that uh, his word shall never pass away. We shall always have it. It's always preserved. It will always be available for his people to study. So that's the first thing about this, uh, this wonderful uh, scripture that we have. It is divine in its origin, which is wonderful. And it's really uh, referred to as well as the living word. Now, um, 
not many works, not any works, can be described as uh, being living. Uh, but this uh, uh, scripture that we have and we cherish uh, is described as a, a living word, the, the living word of God. That reminds us, that connects us, of course, with the incarnate word, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Um, so it's divine in its origin. It's living in its nature. It's also when we talk about um, life and living, it, it is life giving because uh, the Lord has used this book and the preaching from this book to save countless millions of souls down through the, the ages. Um, God's servants have preached uh, from his word. They have preached the word and people literally have uh, found through the preaching of that word and the application of it by the Holy Spirit, uh, they have found life everlasting, eternal life. It is a life giving work. And it's also um, a, a work that outlasts all others. Um, this, of course, I'm sure you know, is the best-selling um, book of all time. And it's also the, uh, the oldest of all time as well. You know, who would have thought that uh, parts of this book that were written thousands and thousands of years ago uh, would still not only be in print, but would be very relevant, very topical, for ourselves in the 21st century. So um, as you think about it, as you try to describe it, uh, the Bible just gets more and more wonderful. Divine in its uh, authorship, it's living in its nature, it is life-giving, it's used to give people eternal life. And of course it's powerful in its operation as well. I'm sure a lot of us have heard um, the description of the Word of God being sharper than a two-edged sword. It, um, it can literally uh, pierce our very souls. It, it can get to the core of our being and uh, it, it can affect us in, in, in such a way that is indescribable to those who aren't familiar with it. But the more we know and the more we appreciate, uh, the more we go to this book, um, the more powerful uh, we realise that it is and the more powerful it becomes in our life as well. So as I said, the list gets longer. It's divine in its origin. It's living in its nature. It's life-giving. It's powerful uh, in its operation in the hands of the Lord, in the hands of the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's, it's final in its judgment as well. I have to say, friends, like I've come across, as I'm sure you have, I've come across countless people who criticise this book. Well, um, that's the wrong way around, friends. Uh, we cannot criticise the Bible. It's the Bible that criticises us. It's the Bible that points out where we're going wrong. And, uh, well, we're certainly going wrong if we're trying to criticise it. So here we have um, a book final in its judgment as well. Uh, it points out what is wrong with us. It also tells us how to uh, effect change within ourselves so that uh, we can put right uh, what's wrong with us. And, uh, and that's a powerful tool uh, in our hands as well. So um, it's divine in its origin, it's, it's living in its nature, it gives life, gives eternal life, it's powerful in its operation, it's final in its judgment and also friends, it's very, very clear in its demands. Um, and uh, I'm just going to remind you uh, that the way to glorify God with all the benefits that come with elevating and glorifying our God, uh, when uh, the, the best way to glorify God and to enter into all those benefits that he provides is to read this book. Uh, upon reading it, we have to believe this book. So we read it, we believe it, then we put our trust in what's being said. And then, of course, we have to obey it. And when we do that, well, we'll find our life is put in order. Not only the life we have here and now, but the life we will forever have in the Saviour. Everything will be properly aligned. Everything will be properly prioritised. We will be better people for getting to know and uncover the riches 
that are in this word. So can I just encourage you again to look to your own Bible. I don't know what pattern or what uh, practice you have, but please uh, read through it continually. Um, immerse yourself in it. Meditate upon it because it will do you good. And remember, it's not just any old book. It's not just an ordinary piece of writing. I'm sorry to be repetitive, but friends, this is divine in its authorship. It is living in its nature. It is life-giving. It outlives all other literature as well. It's powerful when it's applied um, in our lives, powerful in the hands of evangelists who are used by God um, to gather people into his kingdom. It's final in its judgment. We don't criticize it. It criticizes us and it's clear in its demand. We've got to read it. We've got to believe it. We've got to trust it. We've got to obey it. And then we will reap the benefits as the Lord is glorified. So this is the reason for all those thoughts for the day and so much more. So thank you for those of you who are regular listeners. Uh, please keep listening. If you didn't listen, well, there'd be no point in doing these things. So thank you for your um, feedback. Uh, thank you for your constructive criticism when it comes. Uh, thank you for your um, good wishes. Uh, and uh, thank you for continuing to, uh, to listen to us, whether occasionally or more often. You are most welcome. And we hope that we do give you some thoughts for the day, some food for thought. And, well, a wee bit of insight and a wee bit of knowledge as well. OK, thank you very much indeed. Again, um, I don't know, I feel like going away now and having a wee bit of a celebratory coffee or something, but uh, uh, I don't know what I'll do. But thank you for listening and um, I speak to you again soon, God willing. Until then, bye for now.